Hello, and welcome to another installment in our Advisacon webinar program. I'm thrilled to have you with us as we look at Visio process mapping. Here at Advisacon, we help organizations achieve greater impact by leveraging work management technologies to accomplish more with less. As work management consultants and technology specialists, our focus is on streamlining processes, improving systems, and achieving better outcomes. In today's learning, we'll look at process mapping basics, we'll begin mapping a process, look at enhancing the flowchart, and wrap it all up in a summary with some top tips. A little about myself. My name is Alina. I am a graphic designer and creative media advisor here at Advisacon. I've been a Microsoft user for many years, and I'm passionate about leveraging technology to make work easier. As a graphic designer and process mapping enthusiast, I am thrilled to share with you my best hacks on Visio today and walk you through this in a step-by-step -step manner. First, let's lay a foundation in the basics of process mapping. We'll begin today's process mapping journey by considering the top five benefits of charting processes in Visio. The first benefit is that of becoming visually clear. We've all heard the saying that a picture is worth a thousand words, and that's undeniably true in process mapping. You can take the confusion out of any process or isolate the cause of the confusion by mapping out the details. Speaking of confusion, you can use the process map specifically to set goals, outline roles and responsibilities, and find inefficiencies. By looking at the steps, decisions, and their relationships, issues like gaps, bottlenecks, or overlaps quickly become evident. Our third benefit is to identify compliance issues. While not every process is high stakes, it's important to keep up with industry standards to stay competitive. In some cases, especially such as cybersecurity, outdated processes could open you up to costly lawsuits or you could lose clients. A benefit that's specific to a digital flowchart is the ability to embed more information into the process by hyperlinking shapes. We'll get more into the nitty gritty of that later. And lastly, it's simple in Visio to collaborate to help ensure accuracy or the feasibility of your process. In today's webinar, we'll touch on how to share, gather feedback, and even step back in the version history to see what changes have been made. While there are many, many diagram types, today we're only considering general purpose types. If you want to diagram a process and you don't have a specific methodology you want to follow, one of these three templates should work well. The basic flowchart template is useful for a broad range of business processes, where each step can be represented using simple geometric shapes. A cross-functional flowchart is the same as a basic flowchart, but with the added element of structure. There are these containers called swim lanes that represent the people or departments that are responsible for each step. In fact, the cross-functional flowchart template uses the same stencil of shapes the basic flowchart template uses. The main difference is that there are swim lanes added. You can also add process stages. The workflow diagram is a general purpose pictorial diagram. It has shapes for many common business departments, objects, and steps. You can use it instead of the basic flowchart to show in a more representational way how a process moves through various stages. In our next section, we'll begin mapping a process in Visio. We'll go through a number of steps in this stage to set up the basics of our flowchart. We'll choose a template, refine our theme, map swim lanes, add phases, incorporate shapes to show our steps, and use connectors to show the order of operations. Let's begin our demo. So I've opened up Visio here. You can see at the top we have a variety of different diagram templates here. I want to go ahead and demo a cross-functional flowchart for you today. So we'll click on that. And then within that, you'll see a variety of styles here. I prefer to go with the bold shape look as opposed to the outlines. Um, you'll see you can choose what type of units. We want US units and we'll click Create. Working from a template, there's going to be instructions down at the bottom. You could go ahead and move this around or delete it, whatever you want. We're going to work through the steps here. So first they talk about the theme. There is an automatic theme applied, but if you go up at the top, click on design, 
you can go into themes and you'll see there's a variety of preset options. Um, you can also go in and define your own. So that's, you just go into colors and you can create new theme colors. I'll set mine. Then you click OK, and we have our set of themes. Let's click down and select this document. And now it has applied our color. So let's begin our process here. I'm going to do a simple change request process. And I'm going to create my swim lanes as well. You can see they already have their functions in. I'm just going to name them my own names. Let's make this first one client. Uh, we'll use an account rep and the project management office. You'll see on the left hand side there is a shape bar. Um, you can go to these are our cross functional flowchart shapes, those are unique to this type of flowchart. You can also access basic flowchart shapes as well as working with more shapes. Um, so let's stick with just our basic flowchart shapes right now. You'll see that they define, they have process to subprocess, decisions, documents, and so on. In this document, I also want to show you how to add phases. So let's go into cross-functional flowchart shapes and add a separator. You'll click on and then drag the separator where you would like it to be. I am going to create three phases. Our first one will be initiation. Our second phase will be consideration. And our third phase will be close out. You do have to drag that final to the end to make sure that it recognizes a phase name up at the top. So let's work from here. Our first step, so we start with the client submitting a request. Then we move on to, let's say, an account representative is going to complete the change request form. This is something that is comprised of a client name, the change requested, and the purpose. All right, one of my tips here, if you're going to have supporting text, you're going to want to format that a little bit differently. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make those bullet points. Um, not everything, though. Let's remove that. And let's make the heading bold. You want to make sure that um, you're thinking about making this printer friendly for people, um, just because someone at some point is probably going to want to print this out. Um, but these are really quite lovely when you design them correctly, and they're great for easy reference at a desk. Um, I want to show you how to change shapes as well. So we'll click on this. This is a process shape. Um, if we go up, we're in the home bar here. If we go up to change shape in the editing section, um, you'll see we have some other options here. Uh, I want to just change this to a document. This is a document that you're going to fill out the change request form. Um, and we're documenting this just a, a process as is in our company. We can even go down and work with the page number at the bottom. It'll say page one here. Um, let's call this our process as is. Maybe we want to work with it and tweak it, um, say how we can improve it, and we could even add subprocess here as separate pages at the bottom. So as we work from completing the change request form, let's move to a decision point. Um, we'll go to the project management office and ask, is the request approved? Also, I would just like them to stand out a little bit more. So you can either right click on the shape and go to styles to change to a different style. Um, and you can also go into fill color and select your own unique fill color. I like this purple. I'm going to make all these decision points in here a purple shape. Um, so let's say that uh, um, from request approved, let's say it does get approved, um, but then it's it's not going to move into the closeout phase here. It's going to move into, um, it's going to move, let's say yes, if it is approved, then the project management office is going to update statement of work. 
and that's a document as well. So we'll click on our shape, go to change shape, and change it to a document. Another thing we can do in here is change the color of the swim lanes. I like to do this just to help define the area a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and change all of these to a blue tone. Um, and now you can see we can't really see the text here. Um, so what I want to do is to change the text color. Let's make it dark and bold. Now, instead of going through here and changing each of these things individually, what I can do is just select one and then click on Format Painter. Um, that should oop, that should change the whole area that you have selected there. It can be a little fussy um, and change your whole swim lane, so you'll just want to watch that. It is not gonna. It does not want to obey me. That's great here. <laughs> There's more than one way to skin a cat, as they say. Uh, they... And now we have our colors. So. I'd like to take a moment to talk about connectors. Um, just working with these, uh, so you're able to label them, like for instance, this decision point, if the request is approved, yes, goes here to update statement of work. The other one by default should be no. And then if you click on the little yellow dot, you're able to change the placement of the text there. Um, so if you don't want it to be, for instance, crossing this um, separator line, we can just change where those are. Sometimes it gets a little bit fussy um, when it's on another point, um, like this connector. Um, it's just not quite sure what we're talking about. You can also change the color of the lines themselves. So in this case, I want to just select all of them. I don't want them to be this teal color anymore. Um, after I select them all, I just right click, go into Format Shape, and it opens up my shape formatting. Um, sidebar here, you can change the width of those. I like to change them to one point. You also have an option to round instead of having uh, hard right angles at the curves. I like to round mine just to make those look nice. Um, you're also able to change the text. So you can click, click those and, and then go up and edit the text color there. Let's just make it. Um, bold and a darker color. There you can see those updates. Um, if you want to add connectors or work with the connectors, up in the home bar, you'll see underneath pointer tool, there is a connector option. You can add those as you wish there. Uh, um, uh, another tip um, is, okay, here, we're going back into the pointer tool and move this around to see how these are no longer in line and we have a funky twist here. If we want to align these and get rid of that, I like to select them all, go up into the align function, and you can align those left, center, right, top. I like to align middle. That way you get nice straight lines. Um, let's go ahead and make sure that these are all aligned. So we'll select our decision point there and we'll align all of those in the middle. Now we have a nice straight flow. Again, with these, you'll see it defaulted and added our old style of line. So we can just select one that we like, go into the Format Painter and apply that style. So I've worked with this a little bit. Here is my final change request process that I want to work with. You can see we have three clear swim lanes for our responsible parties. We also have phases as we move through the process. Um, everything is color coded and it's a clear flow. Our third section focuses on enhancing a, a Visio flowchart. In this section, we'll look at how to add extra approval lanes to our chart, embed supporting information, link to other sheets, and successfully collaborate with others. Let's dive into our demo. So I've been working with this process a little bit. You can see down at the bottom, I have some different tabs here. Here was our process as is, and now I've created a process ideal. This is the one we're gonna work from. My first tip, is that you can add extra approval lanes. I am just gonna drag some extra shapes down at the bottom and extend them the whole length here. 
go ahead and select our shape and we can always copy and paste in more of them. Um, I'm going to add three extra approval lanes. I'm going to assign one to sponsor. I'm going to assign one to the project steering committee. And one to the project management office. Instead of having those aligned in the middle, I'm going to have them align on the right hand side. And we can also change the color there. I want to make sure that they're all their own unique color. I'm going to use all gray tones since I've already used a lot of color elsewhere. And now we can assign specific decision points to each of these lanes. One way I like to do it is just to add a small marker in. I'm going to add an icon. I'm going to add a star here. It's going to be quite large. But the great thing is we can go ahead and size these down as we wish until it will fit in our approval lanes down here. OK. Let's say, uh, is there enough information to proceed? That's a decision that would go to the project management office. We're going to change the color to make it something that's going to show up. Um, and now we can also add a connector here to indicate that this is their responsibility. One thing that's going to happen, you'll see it keeps highlighting these shapes. And it wants to have our connector avoid any of our shapes here. A way to get around that is to go up to the design tab at the top, go into the connectors and deselect show line jumps. Then they're going to not be jumping around and you can just have straight lines here. Easy peasy. Um, they can be a little, <laughs> but the line connectors are great. Um, sometimes they are a little bit tricky to work with. Um, you can see I'm kind of fighting this this one here. It doesn't know where I want it to go. Um, so I just want to extend my line down. Uh, let's make it visible. So I'm going to increase the width of that, make it the same color as the star. I don't want there to be an end arrow type. It's, it's enough that it's just... It's indicating that that's where we're going. Um, let's make sure that show line jumps is turned off. You can see you just kind of have to monkey with these sometimes, um, but we're getting it there. And now we have our handy dandy indicator. You can go ahead and continue doing that if we want. Uh, for example, is the request approved? That's something that's going to be assigned to the sponsor, to the project steering committee, and to the project management office. We can just select those and align them all there. And instead of trying to drag out a whole new connector, I'm just going to reuse the one that I already had. Um, you can see it really wants to glue it to the shape and, and do it that way. Um, this is kind of something that's a little bit out of the box to do for your Visio diagrams, but it's something that I find very handy to be able to use. Uh, um, you can see it just does not want, it does not want to obey me very well. <laughs> you can see this is something that can be a little bit tricky. And now we have our extra approval lanes. You could assign people's names down here or whoever you need to get buy-in from. Now I want to show you how to link other documents in here. For instance, one of our documents is updating the statement of work. I'd like it to make it so that when people click on that, it'll take them directly to the template. So here we have all of our templates in our SharePoint site. I'm just going to click on copy the link. It's copied that link for me then. If I right click on the shape, I can select hyperlink and enter in an address of my choice. It can be a web address or it can be a local file. Um, and now you'll see when you hover over it, you get a different kind of tab. And if you just control click, it's going to take you right to that. There we are. Another thing I'd like to show you is how to link other sheets here. Um, 
So this is a change request form. Um, instead of having this as a document, um, I would like to have this as a sub process. So if I go to home, I'm going to change the shape to indicate that this is a sub process. I can right click on it and select hyperlink. Um, instead of address, I'm actually going to choose a sub address to indicate that it's just a page that I want to reference. So you'll see all of our pages are listed out here. Um, I'm going to select change request form. You can also choose a zoom. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as default zoom. You can also indicate a specific shape to go to on another sheet. Um, I'm just going to keep this navigating to the same page. We'll click OK. And then from there, you'll see we have the hyperlink. If we go control click, it's going to open up that page automatically for us. So let's move into collaboration and review. A, a great way to check your process is to go up to the process tab. You can always check the diagram or import your own rules. I do recommend getting buy-in from your team. The best way to share that is to go into the file tab and you'll have a share option on the left-hand side. You can invite people directly and you can also indicate if you would like them to have editing or just viewing powers there. Going into email, you can choose how you would like to distribute it there. Um, if you want them to not be able to work with your master document, you can send it as an attachment. If you're looking to collaborate, you can send a link. Um, another way I like to get feedback is to send an Adobe PDF. Um, that allows people to add comments directly in Adobe Acrobat, but they're not able to work on your master document. If you do choose to collaborate, you can always go in to check the version history. By selecting that, you can see what changes were made when by who. Um, you can also choose to click back through the versions and restore or open a different version so you're able to see the work that's been done. That wraps up the enhancement portion of our webinar. There are many other design tweaks you can have. These are just a few of your options for a workflow. In our final section, let's go over a quick summary of process mapping tips. Our first tip is to pick the correct template to work from. You're going to want to identify your need and complexity level and choose the style that best fits with it. Secondly, we recommend keeping the information confined to a single standard page size. Eight and a half by 11 or 11 by 17 works great. If you drag objects outside of the bounding box, Visio expands the page size and you can no longer print on a single page. Given the visually dynamic nature of a flowchart designed for data at a glance and quick desk reference, it's best to assume that someone will want to print at some point. Keep in mind the text size, and I recommend using larger bold headings and shapes, especially if you're including supporting text. The third tip is a little tricky and a bit subjective, but I wanted to touch on it regardless. It gets into the question of complexity. Um, so it's the over-engineered, hyper-detailed flowchart versus the kiss or keep it simple, stupid method. To choose how detailed you want to be, you would need to ask the purpose of the flowchart and the audience. I like to visualize this on a spectrum, accounting for viewer knowledge level and the importance of the process. This tool here on the screen gives me a general idea of how much the process should be broken down, establishing if you need a low, medium, or high complexity chart. To determine the complexity level, ask what type of process you're mapping. Our chart now shows some process types on the y-axis. Keep in mind that these may vary depending on the unique situation and purpose. You don't want to get caught up in the weeds or locked into a process with too many stop gates if you don't have to, is my general thought. Um, the bottom line is you want to create a chart that meets your needs and is easy for your viewers to understand. You can also consider tapping into project management methodologies. For instance, you can use Agile to incorporate a weekly sprint cycle for your team. My last point is to refine and deepen your flowchart. Share it with stakeholders and your team to get their input and feedback. 
that helps you to ensure accuracy or the feasibility of your plan. If you don't have enough room on one page, add pages as needed to house sub-processes. You can then link them to those in the chart for easy navigation on a device. And if you have supporting documents, you can always hyperlink shapes to URLs. Thank you for watching today's webinar on Visio Process Mapping. Please feel free to reach out with any questions. Like or follow us on our social media platforms and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We offer many free trainings in our online academy. You can access those by visiting advisacon.thinkific.com. For project managers, simply become a member of Advisacon Academy to receive the code to redeem PDUs. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time.